I have returned from San Diego Comic-Con and I got to be in attendance for the Marvel Hall H San Diego Comic-Con panel, which is the one thing that I think most people look forward to when they get to go to Comic-Con and it's always a very much a blessing to be in that room. And today I'm going to be basically giving you guys my breakdown on this panel, but specifically giving you guys the ins and outs of how it was to be in the room and also what I feel about the Robert Downey Jr. is Dr. Doom. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below, hit that like and subscribe button. And without further ado, let's get the big bomb drop out of the way with Dr. Doom and Robert Downey Jr. I, I was going back and forth if I wanted to make a separate video on this on why I'm excited on the prospects of this, but I always felt in the end of the day just to include it in this. And for me, I wasn't like I was excited to be in the room and it was fun. Everyone's chanting Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Like Robert, like Robert said. Also, what was funny is like prior to that, right before he took the mask off, oops, right before he took the mask off, someone actually yelled, Jared Leto. Jared Leto. <laughs> and it, it was so stupid, but that's what you get in like a room like that. And, but for me, you know, there had been rumors circulating about this. And once it was announced that it was Doomsday, I was like, okay, cool. Then they are like, we're going to show you the actor. And instantly when they said that, I said, it's Robert Downey Jr. I had heard a couple weeks ago from someone in a group that uh, this was true. I didn't believe it. Saw other leakers going with it. Still didn't believe it. Um, until I was in this room and I had the expectations that this is about to happen. And as it happened, I was excited in the moment. But then you start walking. And you start thinking. And you think, is this going to work? And as most nerds do, we start diving into the internet, diving into comic books, and diving into the realms of possibilities of, is this even a factor in a thing that's happened in comics before? And there's certain things that I saw where there was, like, one where his name was Anthony Stark, and I think it was, like, Victor Von Doom transferred his conscience into this version of Stark. Um, that one was weird. And then there's, like, obviously other ones where Tony Stark did go bad. Infamous, uh, infamous Iron Man, I, said, I think, is a major thing for that. I've never read these comics. I've also never really heard of them until a couple days ago. Um, and, the, and that doesn't seem to be the direction that they're going in. It just seems like in this universe, Tony Stark, or not even Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. will be playing Victor Von Doom. And I say that because I had the idea that, oh, maybe it's just Tony Stark. Instead of becoming Iron Man, he literally just became Doctor Doom in a universe. But it doesn't seem like they're going in that route. It seems like when you see like Marvel sharing this, it says Victor Von Doom on stage. They said Victor Von Doom, Dr. Doom. They didn't say Tony Stark. I think a lot of us were just having those theories. And again, I still have those theories, but I have ideas of how, while maybe this isn't perfectly and set right into the comic book realm, as what is in the franchise of the MCU, there is really good potential for this. There's also really bad potential. And as a full disclaimer, all of this really relies on the direction and the writing. And not just the direction and writing of these two films, but specifically the MCU itself. Because if the MCU itself doesn't build on this, and I'm not saying you need to have him show up in this movie, in this movie, in this movie, because you don't. Thanos had little cameos and little presence leading up to his inevitable Infinity War, where he got the most development. And I would imagine in Avengers Doomsday, that is specifically going to be a Doctor Doom movie overall. There's factors of that that get me very excited. Other things of that, though, make me go, I would have liked to see another actor play Doctor Doom. And I think that would have been cool to still have here. The prospects, and to kind of just dive into what excites me, though, about it, is the factor of Doctor is Robert Downey Jr. is coming back. And the fact that he gets to play a different role and be a little bit different and be bad. I think that'll be cool to see. I also think the fact that he will be fighting against other Avengers that have previously known him as Iron Man is going to be an eye-opener for them specifically. I think when you look at Tom Holland's Spider-Man, if he's coming in here and has to fight him, that's going to be heartbreaking for him since that was his mentor. Same thing goes for what if Pepper Potts joins in on this? That's going to be an eye-opener. What if their daughter joins in on this? That's an eye-opener. What if Happy Hogan sees this? That, that's depressing. What if he kills Happy Hogan? I mean, th those are like the little things that go, okay, that's cool. But would it have been better to just have an evil Iron Man in that part? Maybe. I, I mean, time will tell if they make this work. I wouldn't have minded if they said, oh, instead of we're doing Doctor Doom, we're doing, you know, 
an evil Iron Man, infamous Iron Man here, uh, which again, I think in the comics is literally Victor Von Doom, but I think it would have been interesting to maybe change the perspective, make it Tony Stark, but it doesn't seem that that's what they're doing. But in the terms of the movie context world, it works. It hurts my comic book brain just a little bit and like it feels a little bit cheap in some instances, and I've seen that on Twitter. Some people are not happy with this. Some people are disappointed in this. Some people wanted a Doctor Doom, and I hope eventually we do actually get a new actor playing Doctor Doom. But with the whole multiverse and expanding all those ideas, I think there is actual nice details here to jump into. And I came to this conclusion after I had like a six-hour drive to head home. And think about it for six hours to myself while I have no phone signal heading back to Arizona. And that's where like I had the idea of, well, you know, in the Secret Wars comics, it's Reed versus Doctor Doom. And if, you know, Tony Stark was the face, Robert Downey Jr. was the face of the MCU, the hero of the MCU at one point in time. Well, now he's going to be the main villain. And, you know, he was the one that saved this universe. But now, someone who looks just like him is threatening to destroy the fabric of the multiverse and rule it with an iron hand is what I'm going to guess. And then you have the Fantastic Four where Reed Richards, played by Pedro Pascal, is most likely going to be the face of the MCU going forward after Secret Wars. I would imagine it would be the Fantastic Four and the X-Men, which will be the main front leads. I'm sure Captain America will be there. I'm sure other characters will be too. But that is going to be probably what they are displaying as the face. You don't get Pedro Pascal to not do that. Again, all those factors, like that excites me to see Downey having to go up against Pedro Pascal and that ending up being maybe the final showdown of it all. Also think again, going back to the whole mentor aspect, a lot of people building off of that. And I also think Doctor Doom might need a little bit of a team. What if you have a multiverse of Avengers that are all the original players? Instead of Chris Evans playing a Captain America, he's playing a Hydra Captain America. Instead of Mark Ruffalo playing normal Hulk, he's playing Maestro Hulk. There's factors of bringing in these other actors and having them play different versions of them. And again, in terms of the movie franchise of the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, there is good material there to bring this to life. But in the end of the day, it only works if the writing is good and the direction, of course, as well. So overall, I'm actually on board for this. I didn't think I would be. I thought it was a dumb idea at first, especially. But the more and more I've thought about it, the more and more I've kind of talked myself into liking this and being open to the idea. Again, I would have rather just had a new actor as Doctor Doom. But in the context of what they've done in the MCU, I think there is actual good thematical tea here. And part of me still kind of hopes that like a Tony Stark variant of actually good Iron Man does come in here because I would like to see that banter with like, of course, like a Tobey Maguire Spider-Man or a Hugh Jackman's Wolverine or even Deadpool, for instance, specifically, because I'm assuming we're going to have them all in Secret Wars. But in, if we don't get that, I think, again, there is some cool things in here. And I think it was something fun that, you know, Downey can come in here and play and be someone different. And to be in the room and have that announcement come off. Specifically, I think the feeling and being able to be in Hall H and Marvel Studios, being there was like a big part of it. Even if I was like, oh, well, that's going to be different. I don't know how to feel about that. I mean, like we even did a reaction out of Hall H and I liked it. But I wasn't like fully sold on it and started really thinking about what they could possibly do with this. And that's like if they do that. I don't know what direction they're doing this. They could go in a completely different direction and I might not like it. Or maybe I'll think it's even better than the idea that I actually just pitched. I have no idea what kind of story they might put into here, but I think there is actual good stuff to hear and I'm down for it. With that said, let's revert back to the start of the Comic-Con panel and kind of just go over some of the footage I saw, some of the what they did on stage and... Overall, they kicked off the entire panel with kind of this like Deadpool and Wolverine celebration. They're playing the Madonna song. They have Deadpools running up and down the aisles, dancing to it all. And it was a lot of fun. I, I, I can't lie. Like, it was really cool to see this experience. And I think Marvel did go all out in terms of its thematics and being in Hall H with its panel. Instead of just reading off, like, here's what's coming up in the phases, which I think D23 will be more about, hey, here's what's coming up. Let's talk about it. And I'll be excited to see that nonetheless. Like, I'm, I'm excited to see that, but I'm also very interested to see where it all works at. But they start off the panel with that uh, and just basically celebrating Deadpool's success, the, the box office at that point in time. And then Kevin Feige goes, but we're going to talk about three movies today. 
and which intrigued me, but I was happy. Okay, let's center in on the next three films. Let's really do that and get us excited for this. And because after the success of Deadpool and Wolverine, these next three films are some of the most important films in the MCU. Not because they need to just maybe move the story along in some way, shape, and direction, but primarily they just need to be fucking good. If they're not good, then any of the goodwill you just got from Deadpool and Wolverine and all this shakeups and changes go down the drain. Captain America Brave New World, they introduced it. The director wasn't there. He got COVID, but they bring out Anthony Mackie. They bring out the whole cast, except Harrison Ford. We'll get to that. And it's really cool being in the room because you hear them talking and Peter Poole's the one moderating it all. And he's giving these like good developments and like good solid questions to them. And they poke fun at Anthony Mackie of that one clip of where Spider-Man and Tom Holland was basically making fun of Anthony Mackie saying he doesn't have his own movie yet. I need to watch this movie. You ever seen Spider-Man Homecoming? <laughs> I haven't seen the Falcon. Oh, no, there isn't one. Sorry. And so Anthony Mackie pokes fun at him saying, well, I'm, you know, I'm, you're, you're not 5'11". Like, you're shorter than me. And now I have a movie, so I have that on top of you. I made a joke about how you don't have your own Falcon movie. <laughs> what would you say to him now? <laughs> well, he said, I didn't have a movie. I say, well, you're not 5'11". It's cool. Like, it, the, hearing the cast talk about it, it's just entertaining. But what was really entertaining was the fact they were going to show us a clip. So they pop up this clip, and it's Harrison Ford in that boardroom where we see him, like, walking around talking. And in the trailer for everyone who's seen that, it's an interesting scene. But in the trailer, you didn't get to see what we saw. And what they talked about was adamantium. It, on that island from the Eternals, which they finally reference and they talk about Captain America going there, adamantium, they are sharing with the world. And there's a lot of goodwill to that. Hearing that excites you. The adamantium, that material is coming into the MCU. And I think it's unique. It's different. Definitely not what they did in the past. But I like that. And I'm curious to see what implications that brings for the future of the MCU. Since up to this point, we've only had vibranium. Alongside that, the rest of the trailer plays out. And after this clip and uh, some of it's some of the stuff that we've already seen before, but a lot of it looked the visual effects looked a little bit stronger. The action looked a lot better. Um, and even in terms of the story, I get more of an understanding of what's kind of going on here. We get a discussion between Harrison Ford and Anthony Mackie where he's saying, I want you to build up the Avengers. And that entire conversation, you know, ends with Anthony basically going, well, what if we have a disagreement? And then it cuts perfectly and it goes through this entire scenario where you see all these nice little action scenes, and then it gets to him walking in, president making everyone leave except that that one lady that I have no idea everyone's in the world hates her, Rose Salazar or something like that. I I, I genuinely, genuinely do not know the character's name, but she's allowed to stay in the room. And the Harrison Ford, President Ross, and him kind of have start to have this little bit of a disagreement, and it's not going good. But it all plays out up until the end, where we see him Hulk out as Red Hulk. And we actually got to see the face. We got to see the full front. And he looks awesome. It looked like there was a little bit of fire in his eyes. So I'm wondering if we're going to get that tie-in of the fire effects. Even if we don't, the fact that we are getting Red Hulk in the MCU, I think is a really fun. And I also really liked, because right after the trailer played, we had Anthony Mackie introduce Harrison Ford. He comes out, Harrison Ford talks about it. He's like hulking out on stage, having fun with it. But what I really liked was their, them talking about how this Captain America does not have the super soldier serum. He's all on his own. He has to use more of his tactics. And I think that is going to be a really cool, interesting fight between him and Red Hulk. We also got the confirmation of who Giancarlo Esposito is playing. He is playing Sidewander from the, the King of the Serpent Society. Interesting pick. No one talked about it, but Giancarlo Esposito looks awesome in the trailer as well. We get a couple more moments of him actually talking, some more viewpoints of it. I am very excited for this. I was not primarily specifically because a lot of the team behind this movie were the people who made Falcon and Winter Soldier, which I, I thought was fine. It could have been better, but I do like the director of this. He did a really good indie film a couple years back, and I'm hoping if he can bring that same thrilling nature to this, I think it'd be knocked out of the park, but we will see. After that, they introduced the Thunderbolts, and this has been a movie that I feel like a majority of the fan base has not been excited about, whereas I have been. I like the Thunderbolts comics. This is a completely vastly different team. I personally would have liked a different Thunderbolts team, if I'm being a little bit honest with you, like maybe an Abomination joining, but that that's not what we're getting here. 
And after seeing the trailer, I understand why we're not. I think in terms of the writer and director that they have on board here who did a phenomenal series called Beef. You didn't get to check it out on Netflix. I really like the writing of that series. And that excites me now to see how they're able to bring that in the Thunderbolts. But mostly I was worried the Thunderbolts was just going to be a Suicide Squad knockoff. And from the trailer, I didn't get that vibe. Now, I don't know how they're going to market it. I don't know what the rest of the movie is. Maybe it is more humorous. Maybe it is their banter. I have zero idea, guys. But what I do have an idea of is now seeing that trailer. It kicks off with Florence Pugh's Yelena visiting Red Guardian. He sees a turd and he's trying to clean up his whole apartment. It's it's heartwarming. It's fun. And she's basically talking about purpose and being into this world. And you know how she's kind of thrown herself into work. And you see her doing more jobs for Val and just knocking out assassins. But all of a sudden she goes to this area. And before it gets to this room and you clip out and see all the other people in there, you see U.S. agent. He's struggling. He has a kid. He's struggling with his legacy. And I thought that was interesting to see because I, I found him a very fascinating character in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And I think Wyatt Russell did a really good job in that performance. But she gets into this room. She's looking around. And then all of a sudden, he starts shooting at her. Then Taskmaster jumps in here with an awesome new costume that I like a lot more than the original one. Then Ghost populates next. So now you have all four of these characters going back to back, hand in hand, fighting one another. And then the room locks down. And Bob shows up, who is played by Lewis Pullman, uh, who is most likely going to be Sentry. They didn't fully confirm it, but I am assuming that he will be because there's a, a ton of bullets shooting into him. And he's not taking them. The bullets are just flying on the ground. Uh, but he looks awkward. Uh, and there was nice teases of Sentry there. But I just found that you bring all this team together. You see them working together eventually. But it seems like they're a bunch of spies that got burned couple more interesting tidbits we saw in the trailer were just, again, solid action. But we also saw Avengers Tower, and it looks like Val might be the owner of that. I overall really liked the footage. Out of everything they showed, it was probably my least favorite stuff I saw. But it's intrigued me more about the movie, and I'm curious to see where other elements go. And even, like, how Bucky plays in, because it doesn't seem like he's actually a part of the Thunderbolts team, personally. And it seems like I'm curious also to see, like, why they're called the Thunderbolts and what the asterisk is for I still personally think that asterisk is more of a correction. At the end of the movie, we're going to find out that they're not called the Thunderbolts, actually. They're going to be called Dark Avengers or something of that nature. We will see, though. After this, though, the thing that they've been hyping up all weekend from either the Firework and Drone Show after the Deadpool and Wolverine screening on Thursday, even all the banners up on the lamppost, this was the thing that they were hyping up all week. Fantastic Four, Fantastic Four. You got to be there for it. And before they came out, I've been optimistic for this movie. I like the teaser posters that they've had so far, like with the artwork. I like the cast. Not my first pick, not my second pick, not my third pick. Maybe not even my eighth pick, except for Vanessa Kirby. She was always like a big Sue Storm. I was always very much cheering for her to be Sue, and I'm happy she got it. But everyone else, I was kind of like, okay, let, let's see how this is going to be. Matt Shackman is the director. I, I like that. It's better than John Watts, personally, but I never really felt for that. Personally, I was like, uh, okay, like I liked WandaVision quite a bit, but let's see where this goes. Matt Shackman starts talking about the Fantastic Four and how it takes place in this alternate universe, and it's the 60s, and the best way to really much explain it is it's like the Jetsons live action. Like That's absolutely how it felt in tone and specifically all the looks of it. You go through this and he says, we've prepared something to show you just for you guys. Now, obviously this thing's already leaked out. I'm not going to show it here, but I'm going to share my experience watching this because from before that moment, I, I was excited, but not hyped out of my mind. After they showed that sizzle reel, I literally had goosebumps and I could not concentrate for almost the entire rest of the panel because I was so fucking in love with this. I think this is literally now my most anticipated MCU film like, fuck anything else. I, I genuinely do not care about really a lot of anything else. Like, it, in comparison, this is the best thing they showed. And they haven't even really started filming yet. This was, like, test footage that they brought together to show the essence of what this film is going to look like. And I think it was really cool that we got to see that. And the style, the tone, everything in the MCU now... I am so about because of this. I love that it's in a different universe and now they can play around and do something different. That's something cool in the multiverse that I wish we would have done earlier in this saga. Alongside that, with these characters, we get glimpses of them. And instantly, like I know Pedro Pascal I've been interested in. I love him as an actor, but I'm like, Reed Richards, okay, how's that gonna work? It works. 
uh, the old timey accent that he has in here, the look, the design, the way his mustache is, it all 1000% feels Reed Richards. I, I literally could almost cry right now with how stunning it looked right there. And then, you know, it just continues with the vibe and the tone. You see a little bit more chemistry stuff with him and Eben and how, like, they're so great with Ben Grimm. And you see him suiting up with their spacesuits. And then, again, going back to, like, other little things of, like, him and Sue interacting. And, again, chemistry is off the charts there. Same thing goes for Joseph Quinn and how he's the little brother to everyone in here, and specifically Sue Storm. And he just looks fun and exciting. And the... The score from Michael Giacchino in this in this entire sizzle reel just is so immaculate and touching. And if you've ever been to like Disneyland and gotten to go to Tomorrowland, like this feels like what Tomorrowland should actually be. Um, but the score definitely comes from inspirations of that time period. And I think Michael Giacchino is going to knock it out of the park there. But it ends with the rocket going up. Galactus looking through and piercing through, I assume, the Baxter building to look at them and he looks awesome he's not a cloud he's not a smoke he is an actual giant person and it was everything um after that ended i just sat there in awe of what the fuck i just watched and i literally said like i i cannot believe that this movie is like an actual thing and it literally became the most anticipated thing for me it's my most anticipated movie of next year and that's saying a lot because there's a lot of good shit coming out next year. But this is my most anticipated project. I cannot wait to see it. And I think Matt Shackman's going to knock it out of the park. And I primarily think this cast is going to knock it out of the park. And immediately after that, it was cool. They actually even brought out like the Fantastic Four car and had it go around the whole building. No idea how they did it. And then they said, they're leaving. They got to go. They got to go start filming. And right after they left, Kevin Feige goes, and you'll also see them in the next two Avengers films. Which he's like, let's talk about that. Which we've already talked about the Doctor Doom stuff, but obviously everyone's like, who's going to be directing? They bring out the Russo brothers. They did this nice sizzle reel of all the films that directed for the MCU. And, you know, again, the MCU is definitely backtracking to things that have worked in the past. And, and that's okay to do. I think that's okay to do. And I'm curious to see, like, after all this, how does this pierce forward for the MCU? But I think it'll be a nice little reboot of some sorts after Secret Wars. But the Russo brothers, I would have preferred a Benson and Moorhead. But going back to what works, I'm okay with it. Maybe there's stuff outside the Marvel Universe hasn't really primarily worked all too well, but their excitement in talking about Secret Wars and then even them saying, well, we have to take it back and go to a different film first to set this all up. And then they said Avengers Doomsday. It, it's exciting. Uh, I like that the Russo brothers are here. I like that they got announced for this. I'm not indifferent or anything. I know they'll do a, a solid job. And it's also been confirmed now that their original writer um, is coming back to do this McFeely. As well as I think it's been confirmed that Sylvester is also going to be doing the score for both of these. So you're literally bringing all the best elements of Civil War and Infinity War, or not Civil Wars, uh, Infinity War and Endgame all together to give us the same feeling and conclude the multiverse saga. And for me, if anyone's going to be able to pull it off, it's probably these guys in the most safe hands possible. So I'm down for it. Uh, Hall H Marvel Studios was worth it. You know, I sat in there all day going through a bunch of different panels. I have a podcast talking about every single one of those. You can go check out the end of the Geek First podcast if you want to hear me and my co-host talk about our experience and all those other panels. But this was the one we waited for, and it was unlike anything else. And, you know, I was very fortunate enough to be in that Deadpool and Wolverine one on Thursday as well. And that was like rock the show. This is the best Comic-Con I've been to so far, and just in terms of everything they had going on there. Not just Marvel, but everyone and I'm so happy. Uh, they didn't announce as much as I expected, but I'm happy they focused in on it. I'm curious to see what D23 focuses in on. If they do announce more, or if this is more of, here's the shows we now have coming up. I imagine they'll maybe announce a couple of different things, like maybe a Shang-Chi 2 or something like that. But I liked this. I think some people might feel a little bit underwhelmed. But in terms of like just that Fantastic Four footage, that's all that really mattered to me. And it was awesome. And I, again, can't wait um, for it. That was the thing. And that was the big takeaway I took from this. Not even the Robert Downey Jr. stuff. But I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts. What are you excited for? Are you excited for Dr. Doom, Robert Downey Jr.? Do you think there's good prospects to it? Do you not? Are you excited about the Fantastic Four stuff? Please let me know down below. And of course, until next time, guys, stay classy. Stay classy.